Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Stars in Shadow. Now, I have never played this game before, however, I have heard that it's kind of like the old Master of Orion games, and so I said, what the hell, let's try it out, let's see what it's like, and let's see what this baby can do. So we're going to start a new game here, and oh my goodness, there's so many different races to pick, I should have maybe considered looking through these first. Let's just have a quick, let's have a little quick impression here. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick it based on what I think they look like. I'm going to go whichever race I think looks the coolest. That's what I'm going to play. I like these guys. These guys are cool. They're like little, um, you know, those like little wood lice guys. You know, the, those guys, except they've got like Norse runes written on them. That's kind of cool. Then there is the Yoral Kagana. <clears throat> Kaganate. I'm not sure how that works. They look pretty cool too. I think I like these guys. Uh, these snake dudes are pretty cool also. Oh, they're like seahorses. That's really cool. <clears throat> Wealthy nobles and then the Ashtar colonials. You know what? I like the Orthon Conference. So let's have a look at what these guys are. So they have a 21105 yield. Compare that to some of these other guys. These guys, this is a 2.1.5, just kind of like get an idea of how other people are. Okay, so it looks like nothing too crazy. It looks like they're a little bit higher on the science scale. So this is definitely a scientific faction. And you can see over here, here it is, the academic uh, bonus. The Orthon homeworld of Backhams 4 is a frozen ice ball of a planet that really receives very little sunlight from its distant sun. But it has an unusually active core, generating enough internal heat to sustain a planet-wide subsurface ocean. Powerful geothermal plumes drive the diverse chemosynthetic ecosystem which produced the Orthon, the only known sentient species to evolve in such a world. Instinctively distrusting of outsiders, the Orthon tend to avoid involvement in the affairs of other races and instead focusing on their relentless pursuit of advanced science. The Orthon government is essentially a technocratic oligarchy with the most effective research organizations also holding positions of political power. Their mastery of advanced physics grants the Orthon access to powerful energy weapons and shield capacitors that can siphon energy from incoming attacks and store it for use in their own weapon systems. Very cool. So they live on Backhabs 4 and they have a medium ice ball world. Let's go to the map settings here. Uh, let's see, yeah, we're going to play our first game on easy just so I can figure things out and then we'll graduate to normal. I'll play maybe two games on normal, then three games on hard, and then we'll kind of finish out maybe with the final race on brutal. I, you know, I, you know, it, it depends on how much I like this game, depends on how much I'll play it. We'll just play on easy for this first game. I'm probably not going to play more than like three episodes before I start a new game, but we'll see. Uh, we'll go with a normal map size. We'll leave everything basically normal. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave everything kind of just the way it is, and then we'll just go ahead and get started. We'll play completely standard. We won't change anything because we want to get the um, the base impression of the game so that we can give our opinions on it and develop an understanding of what the game is about. So we're generating a new galaxy as we sit here. Uh, we have four random factions that we will be playing against. Oh, and there is an undo redo mechanic. Ah, okay, starships ready. We are ready to explore the stars. Permit, permit me to introduce myself, Director. I am Analyst Mad Claw, and I will be serving as your senior military assistant. We have just completed the trials of our first warp-capable starships, and three vessels await your command. A scout, a colony ship, and a transport. We are ready to begin the exploration of the surrounding systems. There are no habitable planets in our home system, and so we need to wait to see if our scouts can find a more hospitable target for colonization out in our stellar neighborhood. We don't know what to expect out there, so I suggest scouting unexplored systems before exposing our vulnerable civilian vessel to possible danger. Our scout is unarmed, so don't hesitate to retreat if it encounters something unexpected. We have learned all we can about the universe from the confines of our birth world, Director. Our destiny lies out there. Very cool. Ah, okay, so... Oh my god, I actually kind of... It's kind of... I'm having trouble reading this, but it, I kind of like how it looks. I like the parallax, if you notice, like, uh, I'll show you what I mean by parallax. If you'll notice, these stars kind of move independently from the background a little bit. It's very nice. Uh, so let me see. All right, so this is my planet. If I click in here, can I double click? Okay, no, there's no zoom in mechanic. That's actually kind of cool. 
I interact with the planet from this level. So it looks like there's a space station here and I can click on the space station, very cool. I can refit it to an outpost, I can mass refit all of the same design, I can scrap it. It has hull, armor shields, weapon, it has crew, construction module, okay very cool. So I assume this is some sort of construction thing. Here is the planet. Uh, click to select production, so this is view planet, right? Let's do a little bit of reading here so we can figure out things. Uh, medium, minerals, normal. Oh, you can, this, oh my god, the UI is amazing. You can click on things and get more information. The abundance of industrial metals on Backab 4 is rated as normal. Mines constructed on this planet will produce standard yields. Labor output from colonists and factories is not affected by mineral abundance rating. Oh, okay. Industrial metals including iron, aluminum, zinc, lead, copper, and tin are necessary for the construction of most starships, orbital installations, and ground units. Okay. Uh, let's also have a look at more of this stuff. So it has... 12 solar hours in its day, or 12 days in its solar, or 12 hours in its solar day. Uh, climate zones. The inhabitable regions of a planet are broken up by climate type, which each, and each climate gives certain species advantage when colonizing that part of the planet. Fiddy thrive on planets with plentiful reefs and oceans, while humans prefer forests. Importing colonists who can take better advantage of the planet's climates will tend to increase the overall population of the world as the new settlers expand into previously unused space. Oh, that's really cool. I like that mechanic. When queuing up transport orders, if the revival of colonists would call a population cap to increase, the size of the bonus is shown in green next to the transport cursor. Ooh. Oh my god, I've got so much to learn. Maybe we'll rename this to Let's Learn um, Stars in Space. What What's this game called? I, I know it's SIS, okay? Which kind of reminds me of that uh, Peaches song. SIS, stay in school. F the pain away. It's a good song, you should look it up. Don't, don't look it up, it's a terrible song. <laughs> Uh, the environment, so vents, the, envir the environment around deep water hydrothermal vents is extremely inhospitable for most species, though creatures adapted to the extraordinary high pressures can thrive there. So the max population, so orthon are like highly ranked for this particular thing, and airless, uh, let's see. Building a self-sufficient colony on a planet without an atmosphere is a difficult and expensive project for any race, requiring adaption to an environment utterly unlike the one in which they evolved. So the Rem, the Yorl, and then you can see down here the or Orthon, and then the Fiddy and Treasure. I imagine the Fiddy are some sort of uh, either ocean or plant-like creature. So Ice Ball World. Ice Ball Worlds of extremely thin atmosphere and surfaces enclosed in a thick layer of ice. In the interior, the heat from the plant's core melts the ice deep below the crust, creating a vast subsurface ocean that may be home to chemosynthetic life. Most surface dwelling or shallow water species will be limited to the development on freezing barren surface. Like many ice ball worlds, though Backabs is well outside the normal habitable zone of its primary star, its core still generates enough internal heat to melt and maintain a planet-wide subsurface ocean. Backhab's mantle is especially active, producing a powerful geothermal plume that melts all the ice in the way through the frigid crust. I think I misread that sentence, oh well. Exposing the ocean in spots to the surface, generating and sustaining a thicker than normal atmosphere for this type of planet. These plumes drive an unusually diverse chemosynthetic ecosystem, which produced the Orthon, the only known sentient species to evolve on such a world. Very cool. Okay, so now that we've done a little bit of reading, I assume this is like the sieve turn thing that lets you know starships are ready. Okay, so that's this alert. So there is a transport. Okay, I have an exploration vessel. Uh, let's go explore that. So he'll get there in three turns. So I have sent him there. Uh, if I right click that, that goes away. If I choose research here, uh, our research division awaits your direction. Director, I am technologist dances with bosons, head of our research division. We have completed testing on the warplane amplifier and are confident that our drives will maintain sufficient connection to the newly regenerated warplanes to allow interstellar transit within reasonable, reasonable time frames. The team is invigorated and eager for a new assignment. Towards what target should we direct our research? Choose next research project. Oh my goodness. Let's, oh Jesus, uh, guidance systems. This is a missiles field, it will unlock. Okay, so it unlocks and components nuclear missiles, deals 10 damage per hit, a missile that utilizes a fission reactor to both boats to power its drive and to trigger a small thermonuclear warhead, similar to those available prior to the rediscovery of Starflight. Extra missions provides additional missiles, 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 blah, 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 un uh, usable, 
Bio launchers equipped on the ship. Okay, cool. And then there's mass drivers, and then I assume there's going to be like a laser technology. Yeah, rapid fire lasers. So I, I believe we already have. We already have lasers. Okay. And we okay. And do we have the? Okay, so our race. We we seem to already have. We seem to already have lasers, and this unlocks the rapid fire double. Oh, cool! So you can like modify weapons, superconductors. Let's see here, xenology, boarding tactics, small craft. I'm trying to see what sounds really cool. Ooh. Well, do you know I like xenology because this would allow us to create science station. Excuse me, create create science stations. So I'm gonna pick xenology. Oh, can I pick multiples? Oh, I can queue. Very cool. Okay, well, I'm going to research Xenology. And that seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. And then I'll leave the science screen. Okay, we have construction ready here in Backhabs 4. I could refit a ship. I could create some tanks. I could start on a factory. Is there like a limit of the amount of buildings I can have on this planet or something? Oh, improvement slots. Yes. So one mine produces six metal. Okay, so metal, right. So there's a difference between metal and production. So metal is like the actual resource you use. is like a finite resource that's used up and production is invested into with... Me yeah, okay, so that makes sense. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, do we... So we have, uh, we have farms. We have factories. We have mines. Uh, maybe getting a lab here could be pretty cool. Our race is pretty focused on science. Um, we could get another. We could get another scout, or we could make a destroyer. Oh, I can edit the designs of the ships. Oh my god, this game has so much, and I don't even know what to say. Um, troop ship. Uh, you know what? I'm a little bit light on the whole taxes front. Is there a way? How do I grow my population? Okay, so I can embark Orthon. The growth rate is plus that much. I'll increase the food production by four. Uh, I like the idea of going for a lab. So let's go for a lab and then we'll, uh, we'll back out of here. What does a factory do? Okay, so the mine provides metal. Factory provides production. Oh goodness, I need to read. Factories represent the industrial development of a planet. Each factory produces a boost to labor yield. How much of a boost varies on the current population of the world? To get the maximum benefit, you will need a world with at least four units of population per factory. Additionally, each unit of the population, population will contribute production. The exact amount varies by species, but two is typical. Backhabs 4 has one factory which produces 12 production. The factory is fully staffed. Building an additional factory would increase production by 11. Cool. All right, so we went for a science. I think, Jesus, that was a long turn, let me tell you. There's so, I love this game already. I'm already in love with this game. It's fucking amazing, let me tell you that. It already feels like it's a lot of fun. I love the theme, I love the visuals, I love the design. I'm, I'm already, I already am happy that I paid for this game. Oh my God, okay. So we're about to explore a new planet here. Oh, Director Tenshell, Stardate 1103. We have located a derelict object in the Proxima system. It is an abandoned transport vessel drifting in an unstable orbit around Proxima. There is no sign of life on board and we are not familiar with its configuration or markings. However, the cargo hold still contains usable resources. On your order, we will secure this cache and add it to our own inventory. Yes. Okay, so we just got a hundred coinage. So it looks like there's things to happen here. Native inhabitants. We've detected signs of intelligent life in the Proxima system. Planetary scans show signs of life on Proxima 4. They are a curious gelatinous organism living in the ooze of swampy regions, which our scouts have taken to calling the Visid. The Viscid. 
It is not clear whether they are truly intelligent and we have been able, unable to communicate with them, but they are certainly aware of our presence. If we were to colonize these worlds, it's not clear whether these creatures would be able to provide us anything except a nuisance. Oh, cool. Oh, scans show Proxima 1 to be mineral poor. Crust scans of Proxima 1 show this planet to be mineral poor with relatively few deposits of industrial metals such as iron and aluminum. If we were to colonize this world, the scarce supply of metals would significantly reduce the output of any mines built there. Okay. We've discovered a, a deposit of rare gems on Proxima 3. Scans of Proxima 3 have revealed an extensive deposit of rare and valuable gemstones. If colonized, the supplies of gems on this planet would significantly boost the income generated by markets built there. Okay. And we have, oh, we have detected an abundance of industrial metals on Proxima 3. Crust scans of Proxima 3 says that the planet is rich in industrial metals such as iron and aluminum. If we were to colonize this world, the ample supply of metals would significantly boost the output of any mines built there. Very cool. So I'm going to dismiss all these. So that's maybe what I should have done. So let's go in here. I like, I, what I love about this game is that it gives you the option to either close an alert or dismiss it. Because that gives me, if there's something important I want to look after, I can just close the alert. I can go do the important thing so I don't forget. And then I come back and read the alert in my own time. I love this game already. I, it's just fantastic. Okay, so this is an airless planet. And we are not the worst for airless planets, so we could probably colonize this in the future. But it looks like we need more technologies. Let's have a look here. We can call it this. Is that the Viscids, I think? I think that is the, yeah, Proxima 4, that's the Viscid, the Viscids. Um, I think we can colonize this world because ice is not so bad for the Orthon. It's not so great either, but it also has vents. So I think we could colonize this world. So I'm going to, I'm going to colonize it and see what happens. So the native inhabitants, yeah, this is, this is the planet with the native inhabitants. So I'm going to grab my colony ship. What does a plant transport ship do? Oh, let me, let me read about this later. Hold on. Let me grab my colony ship. This heavily laden transport carries everything needed to start a settlement at a distant planet. There are no colonizable worlds in the system. The bark units lend support during ground actions. Okay. I need to close this particular window there. Okay, I'm going to send this over to Proxima to see if I can settle Proxima 4. I'm going to send my scout over this way. And then we'll go into our next turn. Oh, I'm Director Ten Shells. Oh, <laughs> whoops. Now, I'm curious, has Backhab grown in population? Its population has increased. And its amount of food has decreased, interestingly. A group of armed vessels is approaching. The lead ship sends a message. We are the Death's Hand. We take what we will without scrupular consideration we are as cruel as the universe is uncaring you will be consumed prepare yourself we will not go quietly oh my goodness this looks like a uh, bad news oh I've been attacked I would like you to auto retreat if you can a dangerous galaxy. There is indeed somebody out there, and they're hostile. We dreamed that exploration of the stars might place us in contact with other intelligent species, but we had not imagined that they could be on our very doorstep, and so immediately hostile. We much can reconsider our plans for exploration in light of this new threat. If we have not already done so, we should make weapons research a top priority. Our scouts will stand a better chance of surviving if they can defend themselves. We can refit them with the weapons we've researched and include better weapons in new scouts that we build. We should also probably start looking we should also probably start looking at the design and production of dedicated military vessels. We simply can't allow these space tugs to dictate where we may go and what we may do. Okay, very cool. So can I then so curiously, can I go in here? That's my space station.
So there is one colonist on this ship, okay. So curiously, I don't know what this stands for. Is this growth? It might be growth. Um, so can I go into my exploration vessel and edit the design? Oh my god, I love, I love designing ships and games. It can be, a, it can be kind of tedious sometimes, but I think it's a lot of fun. Okay, so... Okay, it has lasers. Oh, it has lasers, what? Oh, it has all these hard points too, so a deep space base scanner. Where's the deep, oh here it is, deep space scanner. If I take this away, designed to gather information at a range until the system was colonized. Okay, cool. Reinforced bulkheads, that's a system so that increases the armor. Then I have a warp lane amplifier, extends the strategic range. Okay, titanium armor. Okay, cool. So there's no reason to edit this. What about the destroyer? Let's take a little peek at this. Okay, it has it has PD lasers. Miniaturized low power version of laser that is specialized to deal with missiles and small craft. Has a shorter range and less damage potential than the standard laser. Plenty of reinforced bulkheads. What do they do again? Armor rating. If I take a bulkhead away, okay. Ah, uh, so it looks like the reinforced bulkheads are a multiplier for armor. Okay. And we're kind of getting a hang of a few systems here. We're going to finish the research lab, but I think I would like to queue up maybe... Oh, I can design entirely new ships. Outpost transport. Cool. Ah, uh, destroyer. Cool. I'm not going to mess around with any of that until I unlock something significant. So let's go on to our next turn. Oh, defeat at Acrux. Yeah, that was to be expected. Uh, there is indeed... Okay, yeah. We, we read this. An opportunity for colonization. Okay, I can definitely colonize this planet for... We're critically short on food. Oh. Right, we started the run low on food, but sufficient for people to start to if possible, it immediately immediately blah, blah, sorry. Director, our empire has started to run low on food. Without sufficient food, our people will start to die from starvation. If possible, I would suggest immediately using some of our gold reserves to buy a, a farm. Farms are most productive on fertile planets. As a rule of thumb, thumb, any planet with enough plant life to be visibly green from space is probably high fertility and thus a good place for a farm. However, even low fertility planets can be used for food output, but each farm will yield less food. Our science team tells me that planetology Field. The planetology field contains many technologies that can improve the output of our farm, farms or even change the climate of planets we've settled on to make them more hospitable. If the food supply continues to remain an issue, however, I do recommend devoting some of our research budget to these technologies. Okay, I didn't realize there could be food shortages. We just established a new colony. A new colony has been established at Proxima 4. We've established our first new colony at Proxima 4. Congratulations, Director. The first thing that we should do to, is to establish a trade route between the homeworld and the colony. This will provide a much needed trade income and make future movement of colonies, colonists easier. If you have not already done so, order our transport to begin trading. This will send a transport to the trade pool where it will automatically establish trade routes between any available planets. You can send new transports to the trade pool or recall them at any time. To help the colony grow, we should send additional colonists to the new world. This can be done by manually instructing a transport to embark colonists or if you have one or more transports in the trade pool, you can order a transport from the pool to move colonists by choosing the move colonists command from a planet in the system pane. The move colonists command may also be accessible 
by hovering over any planet in the show. Okay, so trade pool is cool. So I want to go to my transport here. Start trading. So now it's in our trade pool. I'm not sure where that's displayed. Ah, here we go. Which provides five cargo space. Zero is needed to transport food. The remaining five earn plus five cash per true trade. Five of the ten available trade routes are active. Build something or found. No are available for civilian transport. One will be available after three turns. Okay, cool. Um... So we have a food shortage. So what happens if I go here to Proxima? So this is the new colony. Okay. If I go in here, how much would a farm? So if I built a farm here, if I buy the farm, this will help feed the population. That should be finished next turn. Okay. Okay, so I assigned a transport. Okay, I'm starting to get a hang of like basic systems here. Oh, we got a new technology. Our, our researchers have discovered Xenology. Choose the next research project. So Zen Xenology unlocked a science station shipboard laboratory. Cool. Oh, I like the idea of getting some small craft. Constructing capable small combat craft will require the development of compact, efficient drives capable of operating in both atmosphere and the vacuum of space. Although primarily for scouting and patrol missions, the high speed of the Recon reconnaissance fighter makes it particularly effective at chasing down incoming missiles. Cool. Boarding tactics. Market theory. I like the idea of unlocking markets. Uh, containment fields. Oh, trade ship cargo capacity increased. Uh, increases the system scanning range to four parsecs. Artificial organisms. Improves farming efficiency. All farms are upgraded to farm planet fertility rule. Hmm. Artificial organisms. That could be a good move. Uh, I... Maybe it would be worth it to get rapid fire lasers. Let's go for let's go for market theory. We'll start we'll start researching that. What kind of we're kind of you know we're seeing what we can do. And let's see, can we go in here to this planet? And if we go to the can create an outpost on uninhabited worlds. Oh, no 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 lab. I want more information about this thing. No, I don't want to queue. Um, oh, planetary defenses. Cool. So our food is no longer a problem. We have plenty of slots here for new stuff. I thought that, is this planet no this planet actually has an okay yield I'm gonna I uh, will I will build a mine and a factory I think those are reasonable things to do will give me some uh, metal or, or, re or whatever this is resources and some production planetary report I wonder, what is this? Oh, is this like total production of my empire? Okay. We'll go to our next turn here. My scout has made it back. What's this button here? Oh, we construct, we finished the lab. Okay, now we have way more science. Let's go take a look at this planet. I could build another lab. I could also build a growth building. I like the idea of maybe can create an outpost. What about the space station? Let me have a look at the edit design here. Necessary for constructing large ships in the planet's atmosphere. I 
Ah, okay, so I could build another one of these things in a different planet. I'm going to leave the construction module there with the uh, nuclear reactor. But I see. Okay, so this science thing is like a way for me to... Maybe there's like an upgrade to the space station that has more hard points or something? I think that I think that's how it works. Right, so I tell you what, I think this has been a pretty good first episode. Um, we learned a lot about this game. So I'm going to say thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this game. This is me, you know, this is kind of a let's learn how to play this game. We're not trying to play optimally yet. We're just figuring things out, how it works, learning all the systems. And, you know, some people always ask, you know, usually what I would do is I would play these games on my own before I play them in a series. But some people have been asking me to show me the learning process. So here it is. So I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.